my channel. This week we are going to be doing a really really cool DIY that's going to take vintage pieces and make them into storage display cases. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use a old vintage frame. We're going to make it into a DIY ring holder. This could also be done for many other types of storage so you don't have to do it for just rings. Really anything that you can think of this could work for. So that's going to be our first DIY. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a old hot sauce box, a wooden box that a bunch of hot sauces came in as a gift, and we're going to turn that into a vintage storage bin. And we're also going to be making our own DIY ornate details to add to this box. So those really beautiful ornate decorative engraving type things that you see on vintage pieces, we're going to be making those to add on to things that do not have that so that you can make them look vintage. So if you're interested in seeing how I'm going to take a vintage frame and turn it into a ring display and take a hot sauce box and turn it into a vintage display case or storage case with ornate details that we make ourselves, then stick around and watch this video and we're going to get right into it. Okay, so the very first thing that I want to do is to take our hot sauce box that we're going to be turning into a vintage storage container. We're going to take it outside to the garage and start sanding down all the engraving that's on the box. Okay, so now that I have our box sanded down pretty well, I don't really feel much texture. There's a little bit of texture on the back here, but I'm thinking that when we paint it, it's going to mask most of that. And the back is also going to be the part of the box that you never see, so it's not as big of a deal. On the sides and the front, I don't feel any texture, so I think it'll be all good to paint. What I want to do is tape off this inside area where it's plasticky and paint the entire box to get it ready to do our decorative molding. And then once we have it painted and the molding on, and this box will be ready to go. I'm going to be using a paint that I used in our main bathroom. I have a vanity in there that I refinished maybe like two years ago now. And I used medium dark green paint on the vanity and did a faux wood finish on the top. So we're going to use the green paint on here. And it's a paint that I already have on hand. So we're repurposing something that we have extra of for a new project. And then the other thing that I am considering with this particular box is when I was sanding, there was like two spots right here that got nicked a little bit with the sander. So they have a little bit of a mark. I'm thinking that we could either swap this plastic out for something like it. The other option is I got a faux glass ribbing peel and stick, and we could possibly put that on the back of this to give it a ribbed look, which would one, add to the vintage feel, but also pull focus away from where the sander buffed them a little bit. So that's what I'm thinking, but we're going to paint first and then we can go from there. I'm going to tape all this off and then we can mix up the paint and get started. Alright guys, so it is now day two. Our storage box is completely dry. I'm thinking that I'm going to hang this in the studio from a decorative hook that I got that I need to install. And that way we can put like papers that we need to keep or letters, that sort of thing in this, rather than just having them in like one of those office table filing systems, which isn't very cute. What I wanna do today to finish this off is to peel off the painter's tape. And then I was thinking, and and you know, we'll see how this goes, but this is my idea. I originally was gonna keep 
this rope handle on here and just hang it from that. But I remembered that I have this one vintage handle that I got on a tray at a thrift store that I have in the dining room as like a centerpiece. But it, it only had one handle when I got the tray and the other one had been lost or removed or something like that. I was thinking that I might be able to make new holes and add it right here on our little storage box. And then that could be what it hangs from and we could remove this rope one. We're gonna start by attaching this handle and I have, it comes with like little, little tiny screws and I'm gonna try and just hand screw them in. I don't think that I need the drill, but we'll see how hard it is. Okay, cool. So now we just need to do the other one and then we can cut this off and start working on our decorative details. touch this up so much prettier okay so we got our handle on I think it looks really cute so I'm hoping that the ornate details will cover this well because I really love the look of this handle and I want to keep it on there so we're gonna figure out a way to make that work we're gonna patch up the paint where the rope was in just a little bit but before we do that I have now removed the tape from the front piece I want to go ahead and add some of the window cling that I have to the back of this and it's gonna give it like a I forget what the name of it's called but like that ribbed kind of like wavy glass effect that is on a lot of furniture now. It's also a very vintage look. A lot of furniture used to have that kind of wavy distorted glass look and that's because a lot of it was hand blown glass so you would get that kind of look from it. So I want to add that on. I think it's going to add to the look. It's also going to hide the papers that we're keeping inside so you don't just see a box full of papers and make it look more decorative. All around I think that's a win and I actually already had this window cling because I have a project that I, I have two projects actually that I want to do with this coming up. and then we just have to smooth out any bumps. All right, so I guess now all we do is trim the edges and let it dry. All right guys, so this is what it looks like now. We have that kind of like wavy glass look in and I think it looks really, really good. So I'm hoping that when it all dries down and it's like fully stuck that when we slide it in and out of our box then it won't mess it up at all. I think this peel and stick really adds to the overall look of our storage box and it makes it look way more vintage, way more intentional and like a store-bought item rather than a hot sauce box that we turned into a storage box. I'm really loving how this turned out. So what I want to do now is start making the ornate details so that we can add them on and paint them and get this box totally done today. We are going to get into that and I'll show you how to make those. It's so, so easy. You're going to be shocked. Okay, so all we needed to do to make these ornate pieces, it's so simple, is literally just fill them with hot glue. So it's very inexpensive. It just requires hot glue. It took me less than one stick to make a full strip like this and I just popped it out. So I know it's a little bit hard to tell the amount of detail that's in this from that close shot just because it's all kind of clear right now from the hot glue. But trust me when I say that every single detail that you see in this piece right here, you can see in the hot glue. So when we get this applied and painted, you're going to be able to tell how detailed it actually is. In the meantime, we are going to pop out our other strip and we're going to make a few more like this as well 
well as some of our more ornate pieces. These are in here drying and ready to pop out. Once we have them all made, we can take them, glue them to our box, and paint them, and it'll be entirely done. Super simple. This literally took me like a minute to do, and we have these really beautiful ornate pieces. Honestly, this is my first time trying this, and I cannot believe how easy this is. And I think it's going to look really, really good on our box. We're going to keep making some more and then I'll meet back with you guys when we add them to our box. Okay, so we have our box all ready to go and it slides in really nicely with the peel and stick fluted glass look to it. It's all going really well so far and I have all of our little ornate details made with the hot glue and ready to go. So we're going to put the details where we want them on the box and apply them with hot glue and then we can go in and and paint them. I'm going to do a base coat in this green color, but you could do any color that you wanted or skip that step entirely. And then I'm personally going to make them look gold so that they look like ornate details by using some rub and buff over the paint once it dries. So I want to start applying these and I have a general idea of where I want them to go. I'm going to put these larger ones on the corners of the front right here. And then I want to take the smaller ones and put them in this middle piece. For the sides, I'm going to use these thicker decorative trim pieces on the long sides and then the thinner ones on the top and the bottom. That's what I'm thinking. I'm going to have to cut these down to fit. We're going to start by doing the front because that's going to be the most straightforward. So it's super simple. You're literally just going to put hot glue on the back and stick it where you want it to go just like you would with any other thing that you were hot gluing. This one's going to go up in this corner. So I'm going to just put some glue on the back. The hardest part's going to be not burning yourself. All right, so now that I have the glue, and then we just plop it down and press it on. So that one's all done, and now we can do the next one. All right, now I'm gonna put the smaller ones in the center. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is to take these larger pieces of trim and add them along the side right over here. So we're probably going to have to cut it just a little bit on the end here. do the same exact thing for the other sides. the detail that came out from the hot glue molds. And I'm actually really liking how it looks like monochromatic like this. I might just add like a slight amount of gold, but leave it mostly monochromatic because I think this is really pretty. So I want you guys to let me know in the comments if you like the gold or if you prefer this monochromatic look because if I do the gold and we like it like this, I could always paint over the gold to bring it back to this. So definitely let me know what you think. Okay, so what I want to do for our first 
part of this DIY is to take this vintage style frame and turn it into a ring holder. So this is a frame that my parents were getting rid of when they were redecorating and so I took it. I just kind of held on to it knowing that a project would come along that I could use it for. For this particular project, if you're making a ring holder or something like that, the ideal situation would be to have one of those backs that closes and latches shut with a little piece of cardboard, more traditional style back. That's just going to be a little bit easier for you to work with, but you can do it with this type of glass too. For this frame, it doesn't have that backing. It just has a piece of glass that's held in with these little clips right here. So I'm still going to use it because I would much rather repurpose something that I already have or that someone is getting rid of that I can take in and give a new life to rather than go out and buy something when I don't need to. I'm going to leave the look of this frame as it is. I think that this goes with the decor of my home and I think it has that ornate vintage feel but I'm going to be taking this art out because that's where the rings are going to go. So for what we're going to be doing, you want to pop off the backing. This was the little piece of art. And then I am going to take my mirror out. If you have a mirror, you're going to want to do this as well so that, so that your rings are able to come through the frame. Because mine doesn't have a backing to it, I'm probably going to use this little piece of art as my backing because it's a cardboard material. You could also use the glass as your backing if you wanted to. We are back today. I paused yesterday because I wanted to get a different kind of batting. I had like the fluffy batting and I didn't feel like that was going to work as well. So I got the sheets of batting now that come like this and they are like little panels like that that you can cut and work with. So I think this is going to be much better and it's going to give us a neater roll to put our rings or whatever it is that you're going to be putting in it in between. We're going to continue today working with our batting to make the storage for our vintage frame storage. So yesterday I got off the back from this frame. This is the little piece of art that was in it and we're going to add our batting and everything onto here. I'm going to set the frame off to the side for now. So this is what it looks like. It's basically like a long piece of felt and it's just super soft and it's what you use to fill things like quilts and stuff like that. We are going to cut our batting and roll little burritos and glue them down so that we can add fabric over them. Okay, so what we want to do is cut it to be about 10 inches long, which is roughly this width right here. And then we're going to cut it to be just a couple inches wider than whatever the backing is that you're going to be putting it on. So I'm going to make mine a couple inches wider than this piece right here. And then when we're all done at the end, you can cut off any excess that you have. So don't worry if it's hanging over the edges. You just don't want it to be too short because that will show when you put it in your frame. I'm going to cut a couple at a time and I'm going to lay this down to see how wide I want it to be, I'll probably cut it to be the size of this panel, so this whole thing right here. So that gave me one, two, three, four pieces, and I think that's going to be plenty for the size that I'm working with with the frame. If you have a bigger frame, you could do more rolls than I'm doing. This is all the batting that I have left over. This container of batting cost me $12 on Amazon, and I still have a ton left over. So if you wanted to make something else like a pillow or a blanket, more decorative storage frames or things like that, then you would definitely have more than enough to do another project, probably a few more projects with this. Now what we are going to do is take one piece of our batting at a time and then the rest we can just set off to the side. And what you want to do is start to roll your batting and you're literally just going to roll it. You're not going to put any glue until you get to the very end right here. And then we're going to put a line of glue to hold it in place. But you don't want to put glue on every single roll because then you're going to end up with it feeling crunchy from the dried glue and you want it to be soft and fluffy so that it can hold your jewelry in between and look fluffy and expensive. So now that we have that glued down, we're just going to glue it onto our backing. And for this, you can add a bit more glue so that it's nice and secure and then we'll just 
press it down and just make sure that it is lining up to your edge so that you don't see the edge of the cardboard. And we are literally gonna do this exact same process until this whole thing is full. And then we'll be able to trim it and add our fabric. to do now that we have them all on here is to start cutting all this excess off. So we're going to pick up right here and we're going to cut right along our frame. And then I'll go back in and trim this up so that it's closer to the frame, but that gives me a good start. And then we're just going to do that on all of these edges all the way around so that it's a nice tight fit and then we can test it in our frame. Okay, so now if I pop my backing in, you can see that it's all going to fit. This little bit that's poking out is not a big deal because we're going to have the fabric covering it so that you won't see this and it won't stick out like that. Now what we're going to do is add our fabric layer and then we'll be all done. Okay, so now we're going to take our piece of fabric. I just have this scrap velvet blue fabric that I used like many years ago for a project and just had lying around extra. And we're going to lay it over our little rolls here and then we're going to glue it as we go. So you want to start at the very top, gluing it down to this top seam and then we can press it in between each of these rolls to glue in between them as well. Okay, so we're gonna start at the top up here, gluing our fabric down to the seam. Just literally lay your glue, and then we can take our fabric and super carefully lay it onto your edge. And then once you get that down, you can kind of touch up the edges so that it's a nice clean seal. All right, so once you have that glued down and ready to go, what you're gonna do is flip up your fabric and in between, right here, in between your two pieces, we're gonna put some hot glue. And that's where we're gonna lay our next piece of fabric. So you don't wanna put the glue on the batting itself. You wanna put it in between the two pieces of batting. And this is where my pencil is gonna come in handy to press the fabric down into there. So just lay it down nice and even, and then we'll press just like this. All right, so now we have a pretty good line in there with glue holding it down. And so we're gonna go and do the same exact thing for all of our rolls and then attach it on the end, and then we can trim it up and we will be all done. So now that we have it all glued down, we're going to trim off the excess on the edges. So if you're like me and when you cut you have these little exposed edges, that's totally fine. You will not see these at all once they're in the frame. So that's actually going to be good because it's going to keep the excess down on your storage rolls so that you can put it in the frame because if you have too much going on on the sides, it's not going to fit anymore. So you want to make sure that you cut as much down as you can. Okay, so now that we have everything cut down, I'm going to clear this off and then we can test it to see if it fits into our frame. And if we need to trim a little bit more of the excess, we can do that. If it fits, then we're done. Backing. So we got the backing back in and I did have to trim just a little bit right here to make it fit, but it's all done. So this is what it looks like, all done. And then you should be able to take your rings and just pop them in just like this and pop them in just like this. So now you have some storage for your rings and you have a decor piece for your home. You could add a little stand to this or if yours has a stand, you could prop it up like this. You could hang it on a wall or you could even put it like in the back of a shelf or something like that so that it is decoration. I think that I'm probably going to put mine in the back of one of our bookshelves right here so that I have a place to put my rings and have a nice decor piece to go into the bookshelf as well. Super easy, really inexpensive 
expensive. I used almost all materials that I already had. The only thing I had to get was the batting because I have a different kind and it turned out really cute. Definitely a good one if you're looking for some functional vintage decor for your space. Alright guys, well that wraps up our video for this week. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you give these things a try yourself. I hope you took away some tips and tricks to making everyday items or simple modern pieces more vintage and more ornate and making them fit in with your decor of your home and your space so that you can kind of upcycle those pieces or add details to something that you already have rather than having to buy something entirely new. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can see more of my videos. I put out new videos every single Sunday. We do tons of different things on the channel. Lots of DIYs like this, a lot of thrift flips, home decor, styling, and I also do a lot of room renovations and makeovers. So if that sounds like your thing and you want to join our community, then don't forget to subscribe so that you can see everything that I put out and be a part of our DIY community. Also, don't forget if you're interested and seeing a video that's kind of a Q&A or get to know me style video, then make sure to leave a question in the comment box below and I will collect any questions that come in so that we can do a video like that and start to get to know each other just a little bit better. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next Sunday. Mm -hmm.